Hey hey guys, Adam here with a long awaited manual engine controls video. This is the second part of the mech tutorial Devin and I are making to explain mech, its usefulness, and how to set it up. The first part of the tutorial is on Devin's channel, be sure to check it out before watching this video since it explains how to set up mech and what each mech parameter does. The link to Devin's video is in the top right corner so check it out and subscribe to him. This video will quantify the performance differences of aircraft with and without mech, I'll show off a few mech tricks, and I'll say what point of your War Thunder career you should be thinking about using mech. Without further ado, let's make it happen! Let's quickly go over all the mech parameters once more to make sure we're all on the same page. If you understand what the mech parameters are, you won't have to memorize nearly as many parameter values for different aircraft. There are five important mech parameters. Radiator, oil radiator, propeller pitch, supercharger gear, and mixture. Radiator controls the amount of air that goes over the cylinders in the case of an air-cooled engine, or the amount of air that goes into the coolant radiator. In both cases, increasing the radiator opening or percentage increases cooling effectiveness, but at the cost of increasing drag. The oil radiator works the same way but cools the oil instead. Controlling the radiators manually is what provides the biggest performance advantage compared to automatic engine controls. Propeller pitch is engine RPM for most planes in War Thunder, where 100% is the highest RPM and 0% is the lowest RPM. The way the engine varies RPM is by varying the pitch angle of the blades of the propeller. Intuitively, taking a bigger bite or angle of attack of the incoming air will generate more thrust and drag on the propeller, which will slow it down and reduce RPM. At a given RPM, airspeed, and power, the pitch angle of the blades has only one solution. When you change the propeller pitch percentage, you change the target RPM and the pitch angle of the blades changes to achieve that target RPM. For German aircraft however, propeller pitch percentage is the angle of the blades directly, contrary to other nations' aircraft. This has a few consequences as you can see in my German prop pitch air brake video. The supercharger is a system that pre-compresses the intake air before it enters the engine cylinders to increase air density, to burn more fuel, to produce more power. It's composed of an impeller or compressor that spins to compress the air. On a lot of aircraft, there's two different RPMs that the impeller can operate in, with the higher RPM providing a higher compression ratio. However, aircraft engines are limited in intake pressure for knock reasons. So above a certain pressure, it's useless to further compress the air. Furthermore, since the supercharger is driven by engine power, the higher RPM siphons more engine power away from turning the propeller, so you lose some power if you switch to the higher supercharger gear and you aren't at the appropriate altitude. As you climb and the air density reduces, it will become advantageous to switch supercharger gears as your engine was no longer operating at its maximum intake pressure. Every aircraft will have a different supercharger switch altitude. An easy way to know the altitude where you need to switch gears is when your power is the same on gear 1 and 2, or if you don't have the overlay it's when you can hold the same climb IS on both gears. As you can see, the gear switch for the F4U4B is at around 2500 meters when wepping. Mixture is the mechanism that controls the fuel air mixture of the engine. It doesn't seem to be modeled on most aircraft, it's more of a binary system where you are either in the correct mixture range and you are getting maximum power, or you aren't and you lose power or your engine cuts out. Some exceptions to this rule exist, such as the P47s which require around 90% mixture to get their maximum power output at low altitude. For nearly every other aircraft, you can leave mixture at the default 60% and just reduce it by around 10% every kilometer above 6 kilometers and you'll stay at maximum power. As I said previously, you get the most benefit of using mech from the radiators. Different aircraft will have different drag coefficients for their radiators, all radiators are not created equal. For example, the f Corsair and the P-51s have very low radiator drag while Spitfires and BF-109s have high radiator drag, around 10 times higher than Corsairs and P-51s. How I think it works is that the radiator percentage gives the percentage of the radiator drag coefficient in the files that is currently acting on the aircraft. So at 0% radiators, there is no radiator drag, and at 50% there is half the radiator drag coefficient. 
Let's see the effect of Mech in action. I'll put my nose at 15 degrees in a D30 and compare the climb rate with and without Mech, with the requirement that when the temperatures reach orange, I must lower the temperatures back down to yellow. The reason the temperatures need to stay below orange is because the more time you spend in orange and red temperatures, the lower the temperature limit becomes for overheating so you overheat faster, as you can see on the K4 here. The K4 initially goes into orange temperatures at 101 and 111 degrees Celsius for oil and water respectively, but goes into the red at those same temperatures a couple of minutes later, and finally goes into flashing red at 1 degree Celsius lower another couple of minutes later. With mech, you can avoid all that and keep your engine healthy for the long term. While the climb tests play in the background, here are the results. In the first few minutes, mech and omec give the same rate of climb because it takes time for the temperatures to get close to their limits. When the temperatures got close to orange, I increased the radiators on the mech D30 which hardly affects climb, while I was forced to start weapon in bursts on the no mech D30, and that gave the mech D30 the altitude advantage which grew as time passed. The effect of mech on climb rate depends on the, on the plane, but you can expect 1-2% to increase in climb rate in the first 5 minutes of the match, and 5-10% to increase in climb for the rest of the match, not to mention it's easier to set the radiators than to burst web constantly. Other than climb, mech plays a significant part in high speed dashes, whether to run away or catch an enemy. In the short term you can put the radiators at 0% and trade lower drag for more overheating to escape out of gun range faster or catch a running enemy. Since the automatic engine control opens the radiators as a function of temperature, speed differences with and without mech depends on the temperature in a given situation, and of course on the aircraft. Generally speaking, putting the radiators at 0% increases your top speed by around 5% compared to using automatic controls. So it's approximately the speed difference between being half spaded and spaded. Mech has a negligible effect on turn performance except for keeping your engine cool while weaping, similar to the climb situation. In all the other situations, radiators should be open just enough to prevent overheating, preferably not going into the orange temperatures. Propeller pitch percentage should be approximately equal to throttle, so you should usually put it at 100%, so maximum RPM. When you drop throttle, the pitch angle of the blades makes the propeller act like a windmill, turning the engine and generating drag. This can be used as an air brake to stay behind an enemy or to slow down to prevent ripping. It's a useful and easy trick. One trick I found to significantly reduce overheating on planes such as the J21 is to reduce propeller pitch to around 75%, and that will allow you to wet for a much longer period of time with only a small decrease in power. In the J21's case, it overheats very rapidly at 100% prop pitch, but doesn't overheat at 75% prop pitch and 50% radiators. It loses 4% of its power to do this, but it's certainly worth the ability to whip constantly. J21 is one of the aircraft that is the most improved when using mech compared to automatic engine controls. All in all, mech is a useful tool, but it's not the most important thing in your arsenal. My opinion is the following. You should only start using mech when you have a solid grasp on aim, situational awareness, defensive flying, and aircraft knowledge. Essentially, if you aren't at least average at the game, mech will likely just distract you from learning some important aspects of ARB. Thanks for watching guys, smash like if you found this video useful, and I'll catch you in the next one.